Hey, David here from Animator Artist Life again. So today we have a shorter tutorial than normal. This one's a bit more of a tip. So recently I was adding more edge loops and subdivisions to a character's fingers and wishing there was a way of adding an edge loop and it automatically conforms and reshapes to the curvature instead of having to add the edge loop and reshape all the time. I did a quick bit of searching around and found there is a way in Maya. I can't believe I didn't know it already really. Uh, it's called the Edge Flow tool and works in conjunction with the Multi Cut tool which we'll also go over. It's great for retopology so let's quickly go over it now. Hi, so I'm going to demonstrate this with a simple bit of geometry first and then we're going to use something a little bit more complicated which is the uh, low poly hand with the fingers at the, at the end. So let's start off with a, a simple torus. I'm going to zoom in on it so we can work with something low poly. I'm going to click on the subdivisions and just change it down to 6. So we've got something good to work with here. Um, click on uh, wireframe unshaded so we can see the cage. And I'm also going to change the um, camera so I'm a bit less perspective. Okay, we're good to go. So we're going to use the multi-cut tool. Most of you probably use this. I have it on my shelf here. You can assign it to a hotkey or you can select your objects, hold down the shift key, right click and choose multi-cut. So this tool, you normally just um, click and click and click again and hit enter to close the cut. You can, you can cut all over, the, you know, all over your geometry. So I'm just going to undo that. What we're going to do is I want to add an edge loop. So what you do is you hover over and if I hold down the control key, I then get my edge loops. I can assign these to anywhere I want. So I can click, click and just keep and just keep going and assign more, uh, more edge loops. I'm just going to undo that. And um, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, check the options for something that I like to do. Um, you can do either go to Mesh, um, Windows, uh, General Editors, Tool Settings, or click on it again and you will get the settings for the tool you're on. Um, if you notice, at the moment we're completely freehand. As we scroll, we can um, insert an edge loop wherever we want along the geometry. Now, if I, um, what I want to do is if I now hold down the Shift key, you can see it starts to stepping. And what this is from is from snap step here. I like to um, quite often when I'm you know starting off a low poly mesh something like that set this to 50, and then it will snap exactly to the middle. So you roll over just once again, hold down the control key, hold down shift, and it will snap. Okay. So now let's go back to the uh, curvature. What we're learning here today. So if we were going to add an edge loop here. What we would want to do is I'm just going to go out to my selection tool, make sure I'm on edges, and I'm going to double click to select the whole the whole edge loop, as you can see. Now, without without this tool, we would have to sort of hit the W key here and manually move things. I'm going to hit the Y key to go back to the multi-cut tool. What it does, the Y key um, uses the last tool that you were on. So I'm going to add another edge loop here, hold down the shift key as well. And again, as you can see how time consuming this would be to try and get smooth curvature out of this by doing it this way. And you would never get it exactly right either. So I'm going to undo this and I'm going to introduce you to um, um, the edge flow tool. What we're going to do is I'm going to um, go back right to the beginning. I'm going to go back to our multi-cut tool. Um, hold down the control key, shift again, enter the, enter the tool. And then I'm going to select it. Oops, sorry, I need to go back to the uh, selection tool. Okay, so what we're going to do now is you could, there's two ways of getting to, to this. You can either go up to Mesh, um, uh, sorry, Edit Mesh, and then Edit Flow Tool, and the option box, or you can right click, uh, hold down um, uh, Shift, right click, and you get um, the Edit Edge Flow from here. Two different ways of doing it. I'm going to bring up the option box, and I'm going to click Apply. As you can see, it's automatically exactly pushed out in the curvature. One thing to note here, you've got, you've got settings here. You can adjust the edge flow from 0 to 1. Same as before, you can do that, do that before you set it or while you're doing it. Okay, so I'm just going to um, undo that and show you how we can quickly smooth this, this um, you know, add, add topology to this whole torus shape to push it out. Let's go back to our multi-cut tool and just quickly add in um, uh, one in-betweens at each section. So again, I'm holding, just hovering over, holding down the shift key, and there we go, select them all. I'm going to go back to the selection tool, really quickly double click, and I'm going to hold in down shift here to add to my selection. Okay, and now we're going to again hit the uh, edit mesh tool, so edit mesh, um, 
and down here to edit edge flow you can go to options or you can just add them in straight away you don't have to so I'll do that again uh, edit mesh edit flow boom as you can see it pushes everything out exactly as we wanted it and again you've got your option to I mean I don't ever change this option I automatically you know because it's if you're just sort of um, you know blocking something out it doesn't have to be exact anyway but this this has pushed everything out mathematically and you can do the same um, uh, for the other areas as well so you might want to sort of add an edge loop in here another one in here select double select shift double click to select again and let's do it this way this time so that would be really difficult without that I'm going to undo this now and what I want to do is I want to be able to do this on the fly as we um, to make things even faster on the fly um, um, uh, edge blow tool so I'm just going to undo all this go back to where we were okay so now what we want to do is go back to object mode back to our tool settings multi-cut if you notice here there's a small button called edge flow and this will add it in as we go this is really powerful so watch this so I'm gonna just click um, it's exactly the same as before I'm gonna ho hover over hold down the control to enter my um, uh, insert edge loop tool hold down the shift to bring up our oops hold down the shift to bring up our snapping click and it's done it automatically for us this is great so now watch how quickly I can I can complete this whole donut just click and I'm just going to keep clicking away. Done. Over here, over here. Let's do the top ones. Let's do inside, shall we? Let's do one at the bottom. And you can see how quick that was. And that's the edge flow tool on the fly. It's really good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to um, show you something else, which is an important little setting. So I'm just going to take you to the next step now. So I now want to bring your attention to just a couple things that might affect you along your way. It shouldn't do it just if you're blocking, um, but this is something important to keep in mind. I just want to show you this. Let's keep, let's create a cylinder. Um, zoom in. Let's go to six subdivisions. Okay. So now I'm going to open up my multi-cut tool um, and open up the option box, which is on my other window. Sorry. And I'm going to uh, turn off the edge flow for now because I want to show you um, two different things here. Let's go in and create a subdivision at each side. Okay, I'm going to select all the curves. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, now I'm going to go, we're going to set the, um, uh, the, in, uh, the edge at edge flow tool now so this is look that's what we had before like we were doing with the donut now you would think this is exact um, uh, now an exact 12 sided cylinder so let's add one to see if it matches let's add this in change this down to 12 and now let's go turn on the wireframe cage and you can see something's not quite right here so let's go to a top view And we'll go into wireframe and you can see it's not quite the same so we've got off our, um, our polycylinder 2 and the first one which is the one we create is actually extended over so this is something you know if you're creating any exact I mean you probably aren't but it's it's good to keep in mind so over here we can now go to the edit edge flow tool and you see that from all the from now we've always been using a full setting of one now if I bring this in I have found that um, in older versions of Maya, I've seen that this um, you need to change this to sort of around the 0 0.8, but I found it to be 0 0.88 hit return will give you will give you what you're looking for. So just a small detail. And now let's go back out and do an, um, something else. So let's move polycylinder one over. And, and remember what we could do here. We could select one um, single setting here and adjust all the edge flows. Now I'm going to create a um, another one, and I'm going to hide our cylinder two, which is our master. And I'm going to go into this, and we're going to do this again, but we're going to do this with auto um, edge flow tool on. So again, six subdivisions, and we're going to go into our multi cut tool and turn this back on edge flow. Now I'm going to create the same again and we're going to create it on the fly. 
batch obviously a lot faster. And we're done. Let's just move this one back out of the way. So now let's move this one back into position, which is the master 12 sided cylinder. And we should have the same as before where it's a bit off, but this one's a bit off um, in, in different ways again. Oh, now let's go to a top view. And as you can see, it's not just um, not just vertically, but sort of horizontally. So it just shows that these are not happening exactly in the middle. It might be because of the sub steps, um, but it's just something to keep in mind. There you go. He's quite off this side as well. If we go back into perspective view, and now if we wanted to change the um, um, edge flow settings as well on this one, um, let's go to uh, poly settings, and then we'll select um, our edges that we that we had affected before. Sorry, I'm on the wrong one. Probably sin two. This was our master. Uh, just goes to show you shouldn't you shouldn't <laughs> name things. Um, select this one. So over here, we, instead of having one edge flow setting where you can um, affect it all, we've now just got one for each one, which can work in our advantage. Um, to be honest, I've never actually needed to change the edge flow settings because I just use it for for blocking out. I mean, this is pretty fine tuning anyway. So there's something there to keep in mind that it's it, that what you get is not exactly the same as as if you um, had the the the, the, the the primitive in the first place. So it's something important. So now I'm just going to quickly just move on to one more example, a bit more of a complicated shape with um, some uh, with the hand with the fingers. So it was recently I actually had a character, not as low poly as this, but um, I was working on the hands and I wanted to add in geometry um, um, and I wanted to automatically add in the shape. And this is when I looked into the edge flow tool and found out all these things. So let's just cut take, this is a very, very low poly um, hand by the way, obviously, um, you know, you might be just blocking out. And again, that's what this edge flow tool is absolutely perfect for. So if we were doing this, we would, um, let's just go up to, uh, let's reset our tool. I don't want the edge flow on for now, I just want to show you. So to add a bit of shape to this, in, you know, the old way, we would perhaps, um, you know, um, put in an edge loop here, then we'd have to go double select it, then we'd have to scale it out this way, maybe a bit this way, um, and then again, um, to get shape across the front there, we go back to our tool, we might want to say put it across there, and then we would select these ones, um, you know, move them out, move these ones out again as well. Um, as you can see, you know, just typical polygon modeling, it does take a while and it's pretty, it, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cumbersome. So this is where the edge flow tool really does shine. So let's just try um, our old setting now. Let's go back to the multi-cut tool and um, let, let's put it on our, I'm gonna go with 50% again. I'm gonna go edge flow. Um, and you know, as before, you could change this to 0.88, got things perfect, or 0 0.9, or, or just one, you know, whatever you be. I'm just going to leave it on one because you know, it's, it, 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 I'm just blocking out here anyway. So let's try this now. Let's go again, add another edge loop here. Click. Look at this. It's actually added shape and volume on all the fingers and th and the thumb. Um, it's just brilliant. So let's go to the fingertips and just show you how quick this can be on the fingertip. I'm going to add one there, one there, one there. And we've got a round, a round sort of finger already. So you can see, let's just quickly go over the hand and do the rest of it, how we can get some volume in the hand so quickly. I'm going to add some in the knuckles. And let's say, let's go straight through the middle as well. So we get that nice curvature there. Let's do this on here as well. And I reckon this is saving hours. Put a, put a little knuckle in here. Again, I'm holding down my control to snap because we've got a snap up, up control for the edge loops. And then as soon as I hold down shift, snaps to my 50%. You can set this to 25. You can even add in subdivisions. So, you know, um, let me just undo this. You could say add in three subdivisions here. And now when I click, 
you, you, you get sort of extra cuts along the way, but I mean, it's not good because obviously you need to fix them then. Let's just put this back to where it was. Um, okay, can wait. A thumb. There you go. Look, I mean, it literally took a minute to add in the geometry. Obviously, you're going to need to go in and reshape things a bit, but it has saved you an absolute ton of time. It also works, you know, if I did that, it actually, did you see that it actually um, pushed it in as well? You know, it, it knows where the curvature is going. It's not going outwards, it's going inwards, so it pushed it in. There you go. We can keep going, you know, I, I hope this really, this really helps. Um, you know, love to hear um, if it's if it's helped you. If you already knew about this tool, if there's if you know even maybe more of this the stuff that you can do with this tool, just let's just share it with everybody. Um, yeah, that'd be great. And if you could leave a uh, a like um, and subscribe, that would really help me uh, grow and be able to create more videos for you guys. And um, we will see you in the next video. Thanks very much.